Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. What would it take for the NFL to postpone the Super Bowl? And I don't mean something like what happened during the 2001 season, when the NFL postponed Super Bowl 36 by a week because one week of the season was cancelled due to the attacks on September 11. But we knew for the past four months that the game would be played on the first Sunday in February instead of the last Sunday in January. I mean that you wake up on Super Bowl Sunday. You're ready to watch the title game. You're all ready to go. You're having your friends over for your Super Bowl party. You've done everything that you usually do on the day of the big game. You're watching the pregame show. And then, just hours before, the NFL says, yeah, change of plans. We're moving the game back a week. Something like that would seem absolutely crazy, right? We've seen the Super Bowl played under some bizarre conditions, like rain at Super Bowl 41, an impending snowstorm at Super Bowl 48 that ended up hitting New Jersey just 90 minutes after the game ended, a global pandemic at Super Bowl 55, and even a bomb threat at Super Bowl 3 that caused the gates to the Orange Bowl to be opened up a bit later than usual. But we've never seen the game get postponed the day of, and God willing, we'll never see it happen. Postponing the game would screw up so many things with television, with advertisers, with fans, with players, you name it, it would get screwed up in some capacity. But what's crazy is that something like this almost happened all the way back in 1949 with the NFL Championship. As in, this game right here. On December 18th, 1949, the Los Angeles Rams and Philadelphia Eagles were set to square off for the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum to determine the champion of professional football. And one hour before the game, there was a legitimate question as to whether or not the game would even be played. As for the outcome, well, let's just say that there was considerable outrage over what Commissioner Burt Bell decided to do. Because this is the story behind the craziest controversy in the history of the NFL Championship and how the 1949 NFL Championship, just hours before it was supposed to be played, was almost postponed. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question, we need some context to understand the two teams playing in the scheme. As in, these two teams right here when they met in the regular season, under much better circumstances. It's December 18th, 1949, and we've got a battle on our hands for football supremacy between the Philadelphia Eagles, as in the champions of the East, and the Los Angeles Rams, as in the champions of the West. The stakes for this game are simple. The winner wins it all, meaning that if Philly won, it would be their second straight title under head coach Greasy Neal after winning it all in 1948. And if Los Angeles won, it would be their second title ever and their first since 1945 when they were back in Cleveland, meaning that this would be the first major professional sports title for a Los Angeles team. These seemed all season like the two best teams in football, and the last time these teams met, as you're watching right now, the Eagles won on a beautiful day at Shide Park by a final score of 38-14. But you never know how a championship is going to play out, especially since this scheme was said to be played in Los Angeles and be played in front of over 70,000 fans in by far the largest crowd to ever watch the NFL Championship, blowing the previous championship record of 58,000 fans in 1946 out of the water. However, when Championship Sunday rolled around, as you can see, well, the weather was not great. And I don't mean that it was a bit chilly or that there was a light sprinkle. I mean that the weather was so bad that not only were there constant showers, but the field had devolved into a glorified mud pit. Now I should say that the weather was not expected to be all that terrible according to the weather report. The weather report for the day indicated showers in the morning, but by the afternoon, as in 
by the time the game was going to be played, it would somewhat clear up, becoming partly cloudy with maybe some scattered showers. Heck, even in Southern California, the forecast 7 in the afternoon, there would only be a few light showers. With the game starting at 1.30 local time, it seemed like things would be okay, or at the very least, playable. That turned out to be completely false. The prediction that the weather would clear up by the afternoon was about as accurate as someone making a prediction in 1976 that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would win the Super Bowl that year. Completely false to the point where it's laughably bad. The weather was so bad that the grounds crew put not one, but two layers of tarp on the field beforehand in hopes that the field would be kept dry and wouldn't be the muddy mess that it wound up being. That didn't work. And remember how I said that 70,000 people were expected to attend the game, with 40,000 tickets having been sold in advance? Well, 30 minutes before the game, take a guess on how many people were in the stands. Keep in mind, again, the stadium holds 101,000 people, 70,000 people were expected to be there, and 40,000 tickets were sold in advance. Well, 30 minutes before the game was set to kick off, so at 1 o'clock pacific time, there were 500 people in the stands. That's how bad the weather was. That's how bad this entire situation was. And this was a massive problem for the teams and the players, because back in 1949, revenue wasn't really generated through media deals and merchandise and anything like that. Teams got revenue based on how many people were in the stands and how many people bought tickets. And this meant that if a game was played in front of 70,000 spectators, like a lot of people expected, each player on the winning team would get roughly $3,000, or roughly $38,700 in today's money. That is no small amount of money. Back in 1949, players worked other jobs in the offseason. You couldn't really be a pro athlete full-time. And back in 1949, the average income of a family was 3100 so by winning this game, you got roughly what the average American family made in a given year. But because of the poor attendance for this game due to the weather, if the game was to be played, each player on the winning team would receive a mere $1,080, or under $14,000 in today's money. Imagine having your pay slashed by $24,000, and that's what these players were dealing with should this game get played under these conditions where the Coliseum is practically empty. And in the eyes of the players on the Rams and the Eagles, and the eyes of the owners, they did not want to play the game. It just wasn't worth it. Move the game back a week to Christmas, and go from there. We'll play on Christmas, even spending time away from our families. We'll figure out the logistics when it comes to booking hotels and whatnot to stay on the West Coast for an extra week since it's not like the Eagles could just fly back to Philly and then fly back to LA. Simply put, we do not want this game to be played today. Granted, I have no clue how many people would actually show up for a game on Christmas, since people already made plans for the holiday well in advance, and probably wouldn't change them for a football game, especially back in 1949, when Christmas was still an extremely religious holiday. If you want to learn more about the NFL play on Christmas, and the considerable outrage that it caused when it happened back in the 1970s, you could do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Although I guess you could play on Christmas Eve that Saturday. But the Rams and Eagles did not want to play this game. Together, they agreed. The financial blow for playing this game, especially for the players, was not worth it. So it looked like the game was going to be pushed back. The quality of the play would not be great due to the field and the weather, the fans wouldn't be happy, and the money would not be great. But the teams themselves can't come to this decision. The man with the final say was Commissioner Burt Bell. Now, for some reason, Bell was not at this game. Why the commissioner was not at the game, I have no clue. He was in good health. But he was at his home in Philadelphia over 3,000 miles away. It seems insane that the commissioner would not be at the championship game, because it's not as though he has any other obligations. But while all of this was taking place in Los Angeles, he was at home, 
and got the call from the Rams and the Eagles to try and get the game postponed a week. As for Bell's response, well, he was less than pleased. What are you, crazy? You're gonna play the game. This game is being shown on television. This game is being broadcast over the radio. We have too much tied up in the media that if you don't play this game, we might be completely screwed. It's said December 18th on the schedule, and by God, it's December 18th. So you're playing this one. Said Dan Reeves, the president of the Los Angeles Rams, on the conversation that he had with Bell, Jim Clark, president of the Eagles and I, agreed early this morning to postpone the championship game because of inclement weather. We proposed to play the game on Christmas Day and requested approval of the postponement from National Football League Commissioner Burt Bell. Hope of financial gain to the management of the two clubs did not affect our decision, since the game is played for the benefit of the players. We believe this will be a great football game, and we feel it is a shame it cannot be presented to Southern California football fans under ideal weather conditions. Commissioner Bell, when we talked to him 3,000 miles away, informed us that postponement of the game was impossible because of radio network commitments and other factors. Bell's decision was final. The game was happening, rain or shine. If people didn't show up and your players lost money from it, well, that's too bad. But you're playing the game today, and you're sure as heck not postponing it a week and postponing it to Christmas. As for how the game turned out between these two teams behind me, the Eagles won 14-0, which is not too surprising, because the Rams' offense was primarily built around passing the ball, with all-pro quarterback Bob Waterfield throwing to guys like Tom Fears, Bob Shaw, and Crazy Legs, some of the best receivers of that era. And it's tough to do that when the weather is terrible. But everyone was furious. The players were furious that they lost money, and the fans were furious with many of them bombarding the Coliseum phone lines afterwards to request a refund. But in the eyes of Commissioner Bell, whether you like it or not, the show must go on. And again, a big question has to be asked as to why Burt Bell wasn't even in attendance for the ski, because he was making this call from 3,000 miles away. You couldn't imagine Roger Goodell not attending the Super Bowl, and yet Burt Bell didn't attend the championship. As one writer said, it's time for the Rams owners to stand up for their rights from Czar Burt Bell. When Bernie sat back there in his Philadelphia apartment and told the Ram and Eagle owners and players that they couldn't postpone their title game, he pulled one of the biggest bloomers of his career. The players lost at least a grand apiece. Another writer said, the game was the biggest event of the year for the league, yet Ding Dong wasn't among those present. It would be comparable if Happy Chandler should decide to go fishing the week of the World Series. Reeves and Clark had to resort to the long-distance telephone to appeal to a guy who was sitting at home running a game 3,000 miles away in Los Angeles. And another said, quite bluntly, if he had been there, it is highly possible that he would have acceded to the request. Whether you agree with this or not is up to you, but long story short, this entire situation was a giant mess in every sense of the word. So I asked the question again that I said at the top of the video. What would it take for a championship game to get postponed? Would any sort of weather event do it? Would anything do it? At least, based on the precedent set in 1949, it seems highly unlikely. Because in 1949, the commissioner made it clear. Rain or shine, Come hell or high water, the show must go on. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.